evening. Because I have to I have to circulate that in my brain that it's evening. So good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the collective. My name is Michelle Turner, and I am the collective's host here on WSME Enlightenment Radio. And what we're doing today is talking sports because there's so much going on. And in reality, by the time this airs, a few of these things will have happened already, just to let you know. So we're not necessarily trying to be behind, but we're not trying to predict the future either. I'm going to talk sports today with the one and only Ant-Man of The Hustle Within and The A.C. Brown Show. But before we get started, I have to say happy Founders Day to my sorrows of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, oh, of yes. which I am a member. All the Delta. Yes, Salute. yes, yes. And I got my, you know, I got my little Delta stuff on. Okay, you, got I, you can't you got see my T-shirt. I know elephant is y'all symbol, right? Yeah, elephant yeah. is sort of an yeah. unofficial affiliated thing with us. Okay. But yes, I am a member. I've been a member in April of this year. I'll be 15 years in. So oh, nice, nice. Oh yeah, that's nice. I love my sorority. Now you did. You did uh, undergrad. Uh, uh, I did a grad. Grad, grad chapter. Okay. I did a grad where I was going to school. Mm -hmm. Some years it would be there. Some years it wouldn't. Okay. So, and I got really kind of focused in my studies at one point. So when I decided to do it, I was a grown woman working, but that was okay because I felt like I was hoping as if I still had something to offer the sorority and doing public service in the community is one of the things that Delta Sigma Theta is about. And I'm definitely about working in the community and trying to help others. So it's been a good match. It's a win-win. And I love DST. So it all works out. 108 years today, baby, we were founded. So kudos to all of my divine nine folk who have birthdays, so to speak, this month. But this is Delta's day. So happy Founders Day to my sorrows. So let's talk sports. Okay, sports. Sports, baby, sports. I love coming over here to talk sports. <laughs> Now, we got a lot going on, as I said in the intro. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, we'll get to the James Harden trade later. Okay. But right now, we've got a good playoff season in the NFL. Well, I took this a loss. This is like unbelievable, right? Yeah, it's un but I took a loss. I took a loss. My Seahawks lost. Um, you know, yeah. We yeah, had a good year. Did. We had a good year. We was like missing a couple – couple key pieces and what do you think they were oh man uh no way to start needed, right yeah definitely needed a a better guard on the offensive line mm -hmm. uh, the defense should have been a little bit more active at the beginning of the year and i mean they came on at the end of the year um i think we still need a corner we still need a corner uh, who would you like to see in that position? If you could choose, who would you like to see? Oh, God. Um, I just think we need somebody young on that corner. Like I think we just a draft pick. I think we bring one of these young boys coming out of college. Uh, Ohio State got a couple good corners coming mm -hmm. out of college. Mm -hmm. uh, even Alabama got a couple. Of, you know, they just played the national championship game, so they got a couple good corners coming out and safeties. I think we got two good, solid safeties. So we're, okay. good on, we, we're good on the back end uh, with Adams, uh, definitely with Adams. And we're going to probably get him a extension going into probably a, a five-year extension. So we definitely need a corner. Griffin is good, but we also need somebody on the opposite side with him. Yeah, a little help, right? Yeah, a little help. We need a little help. A little uh, help. Linebacker, the linebacker core is solid. So defense is pretty solid, what you're going to get with a salary cap in the NFL. So it's, it's, it's more of the offense, offensive line. I think we got some skilled players on, on offense. I think we just need some more players on offensive line. We would have made it. Do you think that 
the salary cap is going to make a difference as to who you bring in? Some people say yes. Some people say no. Oh, of course. Salary cap in the NFL. I mean, it's, right. it's always been the issue for a lot of teams. I mean, it's, it's, it's only so many players you can give $100 million to or $40 million to or $50 million. So you got to, you have to bring in players with minimal salaries and, you know, some players going to make 5 million for five years. I mean, so the ones that's making the big money, you're not going to have too many of them on the team. You can look at the top to bottom when you look yeah. at the salary. You're going to have a couple at the top, you know, maybe five or six at the top and the rest is going to be in the middle. And then you're going to have a lot at the end that's going to be getting the minimum. I mean, a couple hundred thousand, maybe a million, but yeah. So the thousand years, right? Yeah. <laughs> so your salary cap plays a big, a big, a big, because you might have to get rid of a player to bring in a better player. Right. For more money. So you have to cut salary cap so you can keep it balanced. You know, it's just like business. You got to, you know, you, sometimes in business, you have to balance out your, 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 your accounts. You got yeah. to balance out your balance sheet. Yeah. You know, you got to get rid of some of your wasting spending to make things happen for the future. Well, speaking of futures, the last time the Cleveland Browns played in postseason oh. was 2003. Oh, yeah. And George W. Bush was president. Oh, yeah. The beginning of having sky marshals in planes. Mm -hmm. The Iraq War, the Challenger blew up, disintegrated. Wow. So to look at Cleveland, they've always been perceived, especially when they're playing somebody like Pittsburgh, an easy win. Right. Right? Yeah. They played Pittsburgh 17 games straight and lost 17 games straight with Pittsburgh in that series. Right. So, you know, Roslinberger, I guess he felt like they could come out of it. Right. But Cleveland showed him a little something this time around. And they're yeah. headed to the playoffs. Yeah, Cleveland was this this time you you gotta remember this is the new Cleveland. Baltimore yes, it Raiders is is the original Cleveland Browns. Right. So, so there's always that little yeah. pinch, so, right? So this is the actual expansion team. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the, the new Cleveland Browns. So they haven't been around as long as Baltimore Ravens. So when you really look at the numbers, Baltimore Ravens did some big things in the past. They used to be real good uh, when they was at Cleveland. And when they was traded, basically when they traded, they walked out of uh, Cleveland and went to Baltimore. It was one of the big, th the one of the biggest issues in the NFL because the owner just picked up one night and just walked out and moved mm. to uh, Baltimore. You know, so when people talk about the Baltimore Ravens, you really talk about the Cleveland Browns, the original Cleveland Browns, because they've yeah. been around as the original Cleveland Browns. So the the new Cleveland Browns, this is good for them because it's it's a new chapter. New yeah, chapter to this new the new it's really a new one of the newest teams in the NFL. In the NFL, yeah. So. Do you think we're looking at the beginning of the end for Ben as far as being quarterback at Pittsburgh? Uh, yeah, I think they definitely going to be drafting a quarterback this year. Um, I think are uh, either getting a, a, a pretty decent because there's some decent quarterbacks. I mean, even Cam Newton's going to be out there. I mean, yeah, I wish he would stay. In, I wish he would stay. I wish he would stay with Belichick because I think he'll learn a lot. Yeah, he needs you know, because he's got the talent. It's just that somebody's got to be patient enough to work with him and build a team around him. And right. nobody's doing that, you know, and it's unfortunate because he's not going to get any younger. Right. You know, and so consequently, there needs to be somebody who will say, OK, you had a tough season. You're coming in. It's COVID. You know, we're just beginning to kind of like get the groove of being in this offense, in this defense. But you got to know Belichick still, is a win-now coach. Yeah. He's not one well, of the coaches. Well, like, he's, he's really not one of them coaches that's going to develop you. He wants you to come in, learn that system, and go. 
Mm-hmm. And so I think Cam is one of the – you got quarterbacks that learn quick. Like a yeah. Tom Brady. Like a Tom Brady learned that system because he was a part of that system for like right. 18, 19 years. Right. So for him to step into it because – any other quarterback to step into a New England system is different. It's going to be different for them because it's they got play on top of plays. They got mm-hmm. plays for other plays. So when you read that playbook, that playbook, they said it looked like. Besides uh, them cheating. Yeah, yeah. Look, their playbook looked like a telephone book times four. Yeah, so they yeah, they do. It's like this. Yeah. So when you read in one play, it's like 18 different plays for that one play, the audible. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I think Cam – really needed to well right this offseason he really needed to study if he's going to be with new england that playbook and practice that playbook with some of the receivers and some of his his skill players yeah and i think he i think he have i think he have a good season because he started off with a good season he but did he kept it simple but then they started trying to get more technical because at one point in time they was talking about signing him for another 150 million dollars or something right and then right. They, then they pulled that back real quick after game five when they went into the game five, they were like, wait a minute. No, nah, he's not ready. We're not giving him this type of money yet. Yeah. So, yeah. So I don't know. I don't and, know. And, but I hope I hope they keep him. I hope they keep him. Um, it looks like Ben Rosslenberger is is having a difficulty when it comes to depth of the field, right? Right. Because he had four interceptions. Did he have four interceptions this past this past week in this game? Yeah, I think he did. Was, yeah, I think it was like three or four. It was it was something, but he had like five hundred yards too. Yeah, I mean, listen, yeah. you know, he's he's that guy. Yeah. He can put that ball in there, but it seems that this time around, it wasn't enough. Right. It wasn't enough, and Cleveland's defense really rocked the house on them on Pittsburgh. They so really got to before the Super Bowl. Who you think gonna be in the Super Bowl? This is hard. You know why? Because Tom Brady's back in the playoffs. Okay, well. So this that's that's a hard call. I mean, I think I think uh I think it's Kansas City again. Okay. They're young, they're not injured. Uh, Patrick Mahomes is a beast. Mm -hmm. He can read that field. He can run with the ball. You know, he's all kinds of threats. You know, you hear people say a double threat or a triple threat. He's all kinds of threats because he just moves. He can see that field. He has an instinct as to where to go. And he's quick on his feet. Right. Quick thinker. Yeah. Yeah. He's quick on his feet and physically. You know, like instead of him taking two steps back, he can take anywhere from three to four steps back, which makes it difficult for a defense to get to him because of the way he moves, because of his foot movement. But I'm, I'm, ah, it, this is hard because the Bills are good. Buffalo Bills are kind of incredible right now. Yeah, hey, that's my team. That's my sleeper. Is that who you, you, are you going with them? Are you choosing them? Hey, I, I, I'm, I, only time, I, okay. They're the only complete team that can beat Kansas City. Now, what do you mean person. by complete? What do you mean by complete? Yeah, I mean, in all facets of the game, special teams, uh, defense, offense. Um, they got the skill players. They got the running game. They got the quarterback. Mm-hmm. Um, and they got the legacy. I think they wanted the teams that need it. You know, they wanted the teams that have to get out here and get it this time because they. Oh, they are one of these teams that went out and lost the Super Bowl four times in a row. So right. they definitely need this. Their legacy need a championship or at least get to the Super Bowl again mm-hmm. for them to you know, keep with the momentum. And I think they got a built team. They got a good team from top to bottom. I think they built from top to bottom good. And now yeah. that, that only other team that I've seen that could beat Kansas City would have been Tennessee, but – it, yeah, but you know styles what? Styles make fights. Styles yeah. make fights. Just like Baltimore. Yeah. Styles make fight. Baltimore style was more equipped to take care of a Tennessee. Yeah. It was the matchup problem. So say if Tennessee would have went the route of playing Baltimore, I mean uh, Buffalo, 
the first time. You know, that's why they say win regular season, win as much as you can during the regular season. Right. So you can get them higher seeds because you never know who you're playing. Right. Styles make fights. Baltimore was a better style for Tennessee. Tennessee is a better style for Kansas City. Mm hmm. And and, mm -hmm. and 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 Buffalo is a, a they one of these equal teams that that I feel like can be in the middle of the pack, just like New Orleans. They sort yeah. of like New Orleans. They both they yeah. got three teams, but they can also lose. But don't you think that even though it's 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 the matchup, you know who's equal to who, which makes the better football games, like you just said. Don't you think that? In a wild card situation, you're kind of giving the person or the team the opportunity to actually show what they're made of. Right. You know, and that's in a way why it's called a wild card, right? Because mm -hmm. you got folks who are capable. Right. You may never think of them as being somebody who you'd see in the playoffs. Right. And this gives them the opportunity to just push it up a notch one more time. Mm -hmm. You know? I think, you know, like I said, this is tough. This is tough. You know, Tom Brady's in it. Drew Brees is in it. I just don't. You know. I don't trust Tampa Bay this year. Tampa Bay is missing something. They got a good team, but they're just missing something. Something that they missing. I think it's coaching. I just. I don't think the coach, Aaron's uh, can uh, coach Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. you, know, you get deeper and deeper in the playoffs. Tom Brady want to take more control because he's a yeah. Super Bowl quarterback. He knows. Right. And so, and I think what's name also has that man. Drew Brees. Like, yeah, he want to be that that alpha male also the coach. He was like, no, nah, I'm coaching this team. So and so they I think they got that that inner inner um uh, alpha male connection going where they have to somebody have to step up. And I don't know if Tom Brady is gonna allow uh uh errands to uh step up and be a real coach and and let him coach the team yeah, yeah. i think tom brady's gonna be more of that leader where he want to coach and really put everything in play well you know it's been said that he he let errands do it and they had an awful season right, right. last year and so now we're back and we're doing it brady's way and we're winning right to me, it always seemed like something was missing with with New England. I, I couldn't put my finger on it. I'm not a New England fan because, quite honestly, the sports writers here drove me nuts. Brady couldn't sneeze without it being, you know, on the news. There's nothing that he could do wrong. You know, it's just Brady, Brady, Brady all the time. You got six of them. Yep, and 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 that's to be respected because that's talent, right? And he's what forty three. Yep, he's the goat. He's the so goat. you know it's to be respected. But I think, and, and going back to Cam Newton in this sense, it makes it harder for somebody like a Cam to come in when you're over here worshiping, idolizing this guy, the goat. Yeah, and you don't have you know. You're not preparing anybody else to come in. You're not looking for somebody that he can groom. So, you know, it's Brady all the time. But I digress. I think what you see in Tampa, I saw in New England. And I, I, I can't put my finger on it. Yeah, I just yeah, felt like that. something was missing. And I think that's part of Brady's play playbook i think that's the way he there's something there that without him it doesn't work and they can't beat new orleans new you don't orleans think so be, they cannot beat new orleans new orleans is a better team um and like new orleans is one of the teams that is built from top to bottom like like buffalo they one of them teams that can run over yeah. and they got a yeah. quarterback that can get and they got a weird quarterback in uh Taysom Hill that comes out and do weird stuff. He can play corner. He can play linebacker. He can play running back. He can do kickoff <laughs> returns. He can do receiver. And then he can play quarterback. 
So you yeah. got a player like that, and then you got yeah. Drew Brees, which is, I mean, you can put him up there with GOAT status. I mean, he just don't have the championships like Tom Brady. Right, or Manning, right. But he's still, right. he's right there in that top, I say top three, top, top five, at least top five quarterbacks but, all the time. But then you got Aaron Rodgers against the Rams. That's who, that's my pick. I got, I got Green Bay against Kansas City. Okay. I just think because Buffalo is still young to the point where they still kind of, they, they're, they're still, and Kansas City have more experience being in the right. Super Bowl because right. they were just in the Super Bowl last year. So right. they want right. the edge. And they got pretty much the same team. They got the same team that they won the Super Bowl. Yeah, with and, they, and they're they helping. COVID. Y'all remember right. this same team won the Super Bowl when there wasn't COVID. This wasn't a COVID right. season. Right. So that's why I give them the edge to get back, repeat. I just I see, you know, I see Green Bay. You know, you, you don't got home field advantage when you have to move out outside of um that cold weather in Green Bay. Right. Right. Go to Tampa. Right. It's a different ball game. Different ball but game. Aaron Rodgers is smart. Oh yeah, he's good. Very good. He he can throw that ball, but he's smart. You know. Unlike, like most quarterbacks are very physical, right? Right. But there's something about how Aaron Rodgers reads the field that's different from every other quarterback that I've seen play. Right. And I just think that, and it's not to say that the other quarterbacks are, aren't smart. But I think sometimes he sees things that nobody else does. Brady used to be that way. Mm -hmm. But I think his playbook is so old that people kind of know what to expect when he does a certain thing. But I think with Aaron Rodgers, there's always a trick up his sleeve. There's always something that you don't know or notice that he can read real quick. And he'll decipher it and he'll get you down the field. I right. think that's the danger with them. They can move down that field fast. He can move a team down the field in three, four minutes. Mm -hmm. You know. And and it's not even about getting you in field goal range. It's about actually getting in the end zone. You know. But I'll tell you this week, the they playing the um the Rams. They beat us. They beat Seattle. Yeah. Last week, but the Rams has the number one defense in the NFL. And yeah. So with when you go in with a team like that, and one side of the field is going to be shut down because uh, Jalen Ramsey is going to shut down Adams. Adams will not be the Adams that you normally see with Green Bay. So I'm not going to say he's going to shut him down completely because, like you said, yeah. Aaron Rodgers is a different quarterback than Russell Wilson. Right. Aaron Rodgers – get it out quicker so he is a de he definitely a different type of quarterback um so yeah but do you think do you think that it's going to be a low scoring game because they're so defense heavy because usually that's what happens anytime yeah. you have a, t a team that has a number one defense and they're playing somebody like an Aaron Rodgers the scores aren't very high yeah I say 17 13 or uh, 21, 14, something like that. It's going to be something mm -hmm. with maybe like a one score, maybe one score in the field goal, 10 point edge for Green Bay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, got a break. Come back on the other side. We're going to talk about the Harden trade and what's that going to look like for Brooklyn. Um, and, you know, I got a short story to tell. <laughs> We're not even going to get into it now, but I'll just make this one mention and then we'll move on. All right. You are listening to, watching The Collective here on WSME Enlightenment Radio. My name's Michelle Turner, Ant-Man of The Hustle Within, and the AC Brown Show is my guest, and we are talking sports. We'll be back after this. All right. Okay, so 
I gotta, I gotta get through this, but let me just do the intro. This is The Collective on SM Enlightenment Radio, smcrewradio.com, snenlightenmentmedia.com. That's who we are, and that's where we're broadcasting from. It's Michelle Turner. This is The Collective. I am so happy to be talking sports. And with me to do the honors is Ant-Man, and he is with The Hustle Within and the AC Brown Show. So welcome back to the collective, Ant Man. Appreciate you being here. Fascinating oh, yeah, discussion fun. we just had about the NFL. So I'm gonna put this out there and then we're gonna move on. Doug Peterson was fired. Oh from, yeah. Oh yeah, Eagles. Oh yeah. From, from the Eagles. Eagles. Yeah. So I don't have anything else to say about that. That's my team. You know, even my friends and family who were in Philly were like, ha, poor you being an Eagles fan. <laughs> they gave but me you business. He's a Super Bowl winning coach. Yeah, he did. He won. They won a couple of years ago. That's what I'm saying. So think about it. You know, it's rare that they fire a head coach. Just We fired our offensive coordinator for uh, mm -hmm. Seattle. We fired her, which was rare because I thought he opened up the playbook for Russell Wilson a lot. Yeah. This year. yeah. I mean, he did call some shabby uh, plays in the playoffs and the, towards the end of the year, but you know, pretty much, I mean, he opened up the, the playbook for Russell Wilson. And I think Peterson is rare that them for a coach to be fired after winning a Super Bowl. Well, you know, I think it's the frustration. I yeah. think it's the frustration of the front office, the fact that, you know, Unfortunately, the offense just couldn't keep up, you know, and they didn't really have anybody who was outstanding. And they had some injuries. So, you they know, have to, they have to do some day. whatever coach they bring in. He's going to have to make a he or she, you know, some of the, you know, they might bring in a female coach. Yeah, they be, it'll, yeah it would be nice to see a woman coach. coach. They opening up the NFL heavy like they yeah. did with the Boston Red Sox with the minor league. Yeah, uh, they brought in a female, um, and then she was African American. So yeah, that the sports are opening up for females also, which is great. You yeah. know, because there's a lot of us who support sports, professional sports. Uh, there's a lot of us who um, really believe and support our teams. Mm -hmm. You know, we buy merch. I mean, you know, we are we are into it just as much as the men are. Right. And, you know, and we enjoy it. You know, there's there's always something where men are always surprised that a woman can actually sit down and talk about stats and her team and who's good and the coaches and all of that. But, you know, if you grow up in a household where sports is something that's always talked about, it's always on. You know, sooner or later, you're going to know something. You right. may not like it, but you know what it is. You know what you're watching. And you might, you know, learn some things. Mm -hmm. I mean, I learned I learned a whole lot. But I'm a different animal because my mom was a coach. And my mom was a winning coach. So it's a little bit different. My father was a quarterback in college. So my growing up with sports is a lot different. You know, I mean, I grew up with golf football, NBA, World Series, um, and what's the other one? Not so much soccer, but definitely, definitely golf. Because right. my father was an avid golfer. So I got, into, I got into golf probably like three years ago. I'm horrible, but I'm terrible. I mean, I'm terrible, but I did try it. I tried it out yeah. like a few times. Um, I went up to Grand. Did Oak. you like it? I like riding the, um, the cart. I like riding the cart. <laughs> and then that's my thing. I like driving the cart. Yeah. And then I'll be throwing about throw my shoulder out of place when I'm trying to drive. So yeah, it's it's a little different. It's one. It's a. It's more of a technical game. Yeah, it's and technique. you. Yeah, it is technique. It is understanding what you're looking at. Yeah as far as how that golf course is built. Cause you know, my dad used to tell me, he said, okay, look on TV, that may look flat, 
But understand when you're out there on that course and you're looking at it and trying to decide where you're going to hit the ball to get it closest to the pin or at least, you know, to give you the yardage to get to, you know, that particular green, it could be like this. Yeah. You know, so you have to think in terms of the club and, you know, how much yardage you're going to get out of it. And it's a lot. You know, and I basically by osmosis, you know, by hanging out with my dad, asking him questions when he was home, you know, because once he retired, that was it. He was on the golf course all the time and he would travel and play golf even. Well, and so know, it seemed like golf is very popular. I mean, uh, Commander in Chief right now is uh, he, he's yeah. very big in golf. I mean, yeah. he pretty much <laughs> wiped out. He, he, he ended his presidency early to go play golf. So, yeah, so golf is very big. It, it is. And it's um, it's a it's a sport that pays. And oh, yeah. so, you know, one of the things that African-Americans really need to do and, and continue to do, I think things died off with Tiger Woods. You know, oh, one Tiger... Just after I went and tried to play them three years ago, I respect him 100%. I say, man, I can see why he had all the back injuries and shoulder injuries. Right. Because me just drive, learning how to drive, and I don't know how to drive. And he's a, a professional. Right. A, a professional, when you got to still get back surgeries and all these different injuries, yeah. I like to throw my shoulder out a couple times, and I was like, no, I'm good. Oof. Yeah, I it's. Couple, I played a couple more times, and I go out there, and I just like to drive the golf cart and putt. I like to putt, though. I like to putt. I yeah, I'm a good putter. Yeah, I'm good. I'm man. a good putter. Oh man, yes, I can do that all day long. But to to pick up that club and try to drive that ball, mm -hmm. yeah. Even top golf, I'm not like I'm pretty decent in top golf. But I'm like, man, <laughs> I'm like, good God, this is a whole different ball game compared to top golf. Yeah. Oh yeah, it is. It is. So I just think I, I'm hoping that Philadelphia takes a deep look at itself and really makes some good, solid decisions when it comes to who they're going to bring in as far as a coach and shape up the defense and the offense. And mm -hmm. Stephen A. Smith says, you can get rid of the cheerleaders. <laughs> Just start over again. Just start over. You're muted. Now I got you. Yeah. Okay. So, James Harden finally got what he wanted today. Right. He is traded. And he is traded to the Nets. So, he will be there with... His boy, Kevin Durant, and Kyrie Irving. Although Kyrie is hurt. No, Kyrie is like, Kyrie just missing. He's not hurt. <laughs> he just, what he do just you mean missing. missing? He's missing. They don't know. I mean, even the team don't really know where he's at. Really? Because everything that I read was like, he, they just said that he's been unavailable. Right. And I guess that means he's missing because I didn't think about it. I'm just thinking, okay, well, maybe he's on the bench or, you know, he's not in a position to play right now. Right. But he's MIA? MIA. He wow. might be He might be MIA. He might be in Miami. <laughs> we don't know. We, I mean, the, the Brooklyn Nets, but they got Harden. So, yeah. So yeah. Like well, you know, a, a good – um. They had he, Russell Westbrook. I got to say that three times fast. He, Russell Westbrook, uh -huh. and Kevin Durant really, truly put OKC on the map. They were the ones that really made a difference in Kansas City. And I didn't understand why they split them up in the first place. So... Once he went to the Rockets, it just seemed that his whole demeanor changed. And, like, eventually he was carrying the team on his shoulders. Right. You know? And so now, with him being back with Kevin Durant, 
we may see some real progress in the Nets. Not that the Nets have been a terrible team, you know, but that road in the East is always shut either by the Pacers or Chicago. Mm-hmm. And you got to get through Philly, you know? Oh, Philly playing real good. They playing real good this year. Yeah. Well, the the person who was with Philly had a relationship with Harden. And so oh, yeah, more. they originally were trying to build a deal. Philly was trying to build a deal around one of their people to get Harden there. Because this guy was with the Rockets. What is his name? Maury. Yes. He has a solid relationship with him. And so he was trying to work a deal for Philadelphia, but it it never came through and and Indiana kind of stepped up. Right. So this deal means that, is it the, for that team trade with the Nets, Pacers and Cavaliers, it brings Olapadio or Oladipio, I can't yeah, pronounce yeah, his name. Yeah. Yep, to Houston in his final year. Um, but again, they also get the first round draft picks. Oh, they get a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, they got four. Yeah, they four of them. Uh, let me see. Yeah, Kyrie Irving's been out since January fifth. Yeah, miss one. Yep. And <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Like, You're wrong, man, Doc. He You're might wrong. Be with Tyrone. He might be with Tyrone now. He might, he might be with Tyrone from uh yeah. He might be with Tyrone. <laughs> Y'all just wrong. Y'all just wrong. Why you do that to that man? Yeah, I don't know where to I don't know where Kyrie at. <laughs> but he got a new tour to he got a new tour to play with him and James Harden and uh Yeah. Now, do okay. Let me ask you a question. Do you feel like they are now the team to beat in the East, or are they the team to beat in the NBA? Point blank. Team to beat in the NBA. Okay. The East is up his game. You think they can win the, championship? The, yeah, I can see them. They're definitely going to be in the playoffs. But see, coming out of the East, I think there's there's three teams that well two. That they really have to be aware of. The Knicks are playing well oh, no, man. for once, but we don't have to worry about them still. No. But coming they out are. of the East, they're going to be up against either Boston or Philadelphia. That's Milwaukee. I still got Milwaukee in there a little bit too. But Milwaukee's not East. Is Milwaukee part of the East? Yeah, they're part of the East. They're part of the East. Milwaukee. Really? Hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I think I think you're going to have. I think you're going to get more of a challenge out of Philly. Yeah. Because Philly's hungry. You know, Boston kind of takes it for granted until we get to just about the end of the season. And then they start to act like they're really interested in playing, at least to me anyway. But I think Philly's hungry. I think the person that was with the Rockets is going to be still a little myth that they did not have the opportunity to capitalize on having James Harden. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be after Brooklyn. They're going to be after them. And they're really going to play some tough games. I think that's, I think that's in our future. But I also think too, that um, I think Brooklyn is the team to beat. I mean, I'm a Lakers fan. I'm a Lakers fan, so I want my Lakers back in it, you know, but. Yeah, definitely. I think the Lakers definitely, they doing right, and they winning. They got Anthony Davis resting. They got LeBron resting, and they still winning. So yeah. Brooklyn can't do that right now. So maybe no, they got Harden get over there. And James Harden really out of shape. He's not in shape right now. Hmm. He's not That's in shape. To consider, yeah. Yeah, so you got to remember, he got to still get into game shape. So he still got maybe a good 10, 15 more games before he get into real NBA shape. And that's going to that's gonna fall into almost playoffs. 
And now you got Kyrie hanging with Tyrone Bigrams mm -hmm. and, you know, hanging in New York somewhere, you know, with Dave Chappelle or somebody. He hanging with some, he hanging somewhere. And, you know, you just don't know where this man is going to be at. Like, what's going on with his mind? Like, what his mindset is. And then you got a lot of the players. I think a lot of the teams are going to really have issues when it comes to the season. How so? Because of COVID. Because a lot of teams now. Yeah, games have been postponed. Yeah, right the the bat. players are saying they're not playing. They're not going to be treated like kids or right. they can't go hang with the other, you know, other players or they can't go to the restaurants. So teams are really getting to the point like, wait a minute now. We're not property, but they are. Right. They yeah. gotta remember they are property. Yeah, they they're are. Investment. They they investments. Right. If I'm investing twenty million dollars into you. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you like, hey, how you, right? You know, how you should be moving around. Because I'm not so, trying to lose my twenty million dollar investment. Right. 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 And I think, for the most part, it'll be interesting to see whether they decide to get vaccinated, whether they're going to turn and go into a bubble again or whether they're going to get vaccinated. Is the NBA, and is all sports really, going to ask athletes to get vaccinated so they'll have that little passport card? Because, uh -huh. you know, bottom line is they're killing the profit. The profit is not there. No matter what they do, you know, they might have stuff rep, you know, uh contracts left over as far as revenue um from previous contracts that were coming in. But, you know, if this is a contract season, like if this were a new contract season, I don't know how much money anybody's making besides being on TV, you know. I just, you know, you're not making, even though you're you're traveling and, you know, you may be on NBC, uh, NBA League Pass. You're not you're not bringing people into the, the forums, the stadiums, the gyms. Right. So you don't you know, you don't have that revenue. Yeah. But, you know, that's just a small part of the revenue for um, teams because they make most of their money from TV deals. I mean, right. Like, the TV deals are $10 billion. You well, know, that's they, what I said. You know, you on, you on M, uh, NBA League. Yeah, you got you know, NBA, NBA, NBC, NBC, ESPN, um, TNT, TBS. Yep. Uh, I mean, they are all, every network you can think of. And then they got their own network, NBA TV. Like you said, they got $10 billion invested into um, team revenue, team sharing revenue. So when you as a player, they sign you to a $130 million deal, like a James Harden or Kevin Durant, you get COVID, you can't play. Right. So now you got to sit out for 10 days. And then if you've been around players on that same team or other teams, now they have to sit out. So that's how, yeah. that's what's going on now. And players are looking at it like, wait a minute, you knew we were going to do this. Right. And they knew about this. The players and the, the collective bargaining agreement, they, you yeah. know, they all talked about this and said, hey, this is what's going to happen. This is a COVID year. There's no more bubble. Since y'all don't want to do a bubble, we still, you know, you got to still be mindful that we are on a global pandemic. Right. So traveling is still part of it. People are still getting COVID twice, three times. Right. Doesn't right. matter. They're like this is like the flu. You can keep getting it. <laughs> well, I think too, when you start to talk about whether players are going to sit out a season or not, you know, then the NBA has to go back to the drawing board and figure out how they are going to complete their season. And I really think that they're going to ask players to be vaccinated. Right. I really do. I think that's what's going to happen. They're going to have to. Yeah, because they, you know, you're missing out too much. And you got to bring people back into the stadiums. You got to bring people true. back into these things. The only reason they haven't 
put it on the table now because it's so early mm. and they don't know how it affects the body. That's the reason. Like everybody that's taking it right now, if you're taking the vaccine, I mean, it's hopefully it's saving lives, which I I, I pray I pray that it do. Mm -hmm. And in given day, you know, this is still. First of all, the vaccine was normally it takes three to four years to five years to, to complete a vaccine. Right. And they did the vaccine in under a year. So if you look at the whole breakdown of this vaccine, it was a rush vaccine. Every company jumped on the same bar, you know, same bandwagon and said, Hey, you know, let me put this vaccine out here and see what it does. <laughs> because, you know, it we don't know what the side effects in the future it may be for someone that took the vaccine. Mm -hmm. And that's what the NF NBA, like you said, they invest in millions of dollars into these players. So they have to make sure that 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 investment is protected by any means. Well, I mean, you know, to the to the scientists credit, there were platforms, they call them platforms, that they had already been working on with COVID. Yeah. Because what people don't realize, and I because of course in the beginning when this thing struck and you couldn't go anywhere, you know, I was watching all these different things on COVID and how they were trying to put together a vaccine. And one of the things that they said is that the reason why it's called number 19 is because there's been so many strands before it. And that's the year. Mm -hmm. This is COVID in 2019. So therefore, it's COVID-19. Oh, that's so, bad, too. That's, right. a bad, that's a bad 19. That's a bad one. <laughs> so yeah. they have been working to with all of the other COVIDs previously. So they had something to build on, which is that platform. Right. And so they rushed the process, but they definitely were on track with it. Okay. They they on they they knew what they were up against. It wasn't like this came out of the blue. They had been studying it. They had been putting different things together. And I think what happened was probably a bunch of scientists came together and said, okay, we know this much, we know this much, we know this works, we know this works, and put it together. So that's what we have now. Because if we had to wait for another year of this vaccine to come out, humans humans would be white. I think we'd, we'd, we'd definitely see a huge reduction <laughs> of the human population as we know it. I think that was where we were bound because in LA, somebody is dying like every eight minutes of COVID. Yeah, LA is bad, like it's real bad. Right now it's very bad. It's very so bad. Like I can bad. only see them, I can see the, the NBA, the NFL, Major League Baseball, all of them not only requiring players to have that passport card that shows, yes, I've had the vaccine, but fans as well. So I, I think that's where we're headed in the future. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's been a blast as usual. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you oh, yeah. so much for talking sports with me this evening. I'm hoping so you, got the Lakers, that, so you got the Lakers winning the NBA championship again, right? Oh, you got oh yeah, oh yeah. But you said Brooklyn and LA playing for the championship. Yep. Okay. All yep, right. I see that. But you know, again, Stephon Curry's healthy. He's back. Oh yeah, they need some more help though. They, they need more help, but they need, they need a little bit more help. I mean, he got to score seventy points a game every night for them to win the win the championship. He's but going they, to score they, 70 points. I mean, he yeah, did 69. I think he did the 67, 69. Yeah, he did. I think it was 69. Yeah, so a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. But when they on, they're on. So it's to be considered coming out of the West. But anyway, thank you again, Ant Man. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. I love thank coming you. on here to talk sports. I appreciate your time. Ant-Man is someone who has been working on Enlightenment Radio. He has a show called The Hustle Within. Right. 
And he's also a part of the AC Brown show. Right. So I appreciate him greatly being a part of the collective. Oh, yeah. I'm Michelle yeah. Turner. Thank you so much. Happy Founders Day to my sorors again. We'll catch you next week. All Thank right. you, guys. Good night.